Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we are going to work on our homepage. So let's get started. On the previous episode, we created all our models and migrations. So now we have enough data to actually so show something on the screen. So we don't have a, a homepage at the moment. So let's go ahead and actually create that. I'm going to open up our uh, web.php file, which is going to be our route file. So it's going to be inside routes web. And we already have a route, which is going to be our welcome route, right? This page over here. So I'm going to reuse this. So uh, let's start off by actually renaming this welcome.blade.php to home. So I'm going to name it home.blade.php. And let's update this to also home. Okay. And uh, so now for now, we're going to keep this as is. So let's open up this home.blade.php file. So this is the welcome page we have over here. And I don't think we actually need any of the code inside. So let's just go ahead and delete everything. And we can actually start off by adding our application layout. So I'm going to copy it from our dashboard page so we don't have to type it in and then get rid of all the dashboard related stuff. So all the things in the middle, let's format this. So now we should be able to see our header and footer over here. So let me reload. And as you guys can see, we actually have the layout over here. So now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and move the homepage content inside. So I have the GitHub here, guys, and the link is always in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the entire homepage code. So in order to copy it, uh, you can click on this copy raw file on the right side. So I'm just going to hit and copy it. And to make things a bit easier, I'm going to actually first open it up on a new file. And VS Code automatically detects this HTML. So, and I'm going to get rid of all the parts that we don't need, which is going to be the header. We don't need that. Uh, so this is the hero section. Okay. So I'm going to copy this or cut this and I'm going to put it over here. So let's see if we can actually see that we do. So this is the hero section. And then under it, we have our main section, which is this main tag, right? We don't actually need to copy that main tag because we already have it inside our layout. So if you guys check out the app.blade, we already have this main tag, right? So it's a shared thing across all the pages. So we need to actually copy whatever is inside of it. So I'm going to minimize the content inside, which is this margin bottom 10, whatever. I'm going to copy that, go back to our layout, and I'm going to paste that in, okay? Now, if you go ahead and we try to see it, it looks all over the place. It has kind of been divided into two sections. Now, the main reason this is happening is this hero section isn't actually supposed to be inside this main tag, right? So whatever we put inside our layout, it goes inside, in, is replaced with this slot, right? So it's going to be inside the main. But if you guys remember from the original kind of template, uh, this hero section is actually outside main, right? So we need a way to actually basically put the code above here, right? So there are a couple of ways of doing it. You can actually use uh, blade component slots, or we can also use the yield. If you guys have used yield, I'm going to just go ahead and use it because it's, I think everyone knows how to use it. So, and I'm going to name it hero section. Okay. So now we can actually put some sort of code inside here. So in order to do that, all we have to do is we can wrap this hero section with a section directive and then give it a hero, name it hero. And this will go ahead and hopefully fix the issue. So let's format this. Now let's re reload and as you guys can see it got fixed so now this hero section is actually placed above the main tag so that's good i'm going to go ahead and close this new file we created so now that we have this page and it seems to be working some of the images are not loading that's okay we, we don't need to worry about them so let's start off by actually first implementing this future post section okay now there is quite a lot of html obviously a lot of duplicates so i'm going to first actually clean it up a little bit so we're going to go inside this uh, kind of div uh, we have another div, then we have an H2, which is future posts. So it's this H2 here. And then inside it, we have a div with full width. And then under that, we have a grid, right? So this grid contains all these kind of cards, right? Which is going to be our blog post, right? So if you look at it, there is a div with columns, right? So if, if I minimize this, we have multiple columns, right? So basically, each of these is going to be our... Uh, postcards, right? So I'm going to actually go ahead and delete these other two. So I'm going to only keep one. And if you reload, we now have only one card, right? So this is basically, that's how we know that we actually have the right HTML. And if you take a look, the latest post is exactly identical to the future posts, right? So the HTML is exactly the same. It just is showing more posts and then it has, yeah, different posts, but it's just more of them. So I'm actually going to go ahead and completely remove all the, the grid inside latest posts. So let's go ahead and delete that. Uh, the main reason I'm doing it is because it's making, it's making our HTML too big. So it makes it harder to work with. So now that we have this, guys, let's go ahead and actually try to load some data inside this view file. 
Now, we could actually do it over here inside the route file, but I think it's better if we extract it into its own controller. So let's go ahead and create a new controller uh, for our homepage. So we can go ahead and open up terminal and type in php artisan make controller. And then I'm going to name mine home controller. Okay. Hit enter. Now, one thing I would also like to do beforehand is I'm going to go ahead and make it an invocable controller. So you can go ahead and do uh, invocable or do dash i, and this will go ahead and make an invocable controller. It's basically a single use case or single use uh, type of controller. And I'll show you guys how it works in a second if you haven't used it. So hit enter. So let's open up this controller. Basically, an invocable controller is a controller that has an invoke method. That's it, right? It's kind of in the name. And it's basically used for handling. Uh, for use cases where your controller only performs one task, right? So in our case, we only have a home page. We don't really have any other functionality surrounding it. So now that we have this, I'm going to move this uh, return uh, view home inside our uh, controller. And I'm going to go ahead and replace this function. So in, for invocable controllers, you, all you have to do is just pass in the class. So we have, we can go ahead and say home controller class. And that's all we have to do, okay? So that's how you use uh, invocable controller or how you know uh, this is an invocable controller. You don't need to pass in, for example, something like index or whatever. Okay, so that's how you would generally define it. With invocable controllers, you just pass in the class. So now that we have this, let's make sure everything works. It does. We can go ahead and actually pass in some data to our uh, view. So I'm going to go ahead and pass in an array. And the first part is going to be obviously our futures post. So I'm going to pass in a variable of futured posts. And I post the capital P. And we can go ahead for now, just pass in some random data later on, we'll update it. So I'm going to say post, uh, take three, and then uh, let's just take some three posts. We're not going to worry about if it's actually futured or not. I just want to first get the logic of uh, displaying it done. So let's go back to our homepage. So this is our uh, card, right? So I'm going to wrap it with a for each loop. So we can say for each uh, futured posts as post. And we need to add this for each under here. So now if we reload, we should see three posts. As you guys can see, we are actually seeing that. That's very good. However, we don't have the images. Actually, it seems like I broke something unintentionally. Let's see. What did I do? I'm actually not sure what did I do. Was it because of the for each loop? Nope. Something else. Let's see why. So I think the reason this is happening is because we no longer have any content. It's not taking the full width. So I think we should be able to fix this by giving this W full. So go ahead and guys, you can add this W full to your uh, top div element. And hopefully that will fix the issue. It seems to have. Yeah, it has fixed the issue. So I'm going to go ahead and uncomment the for each loop. And now we should actually have three posts, right? So obviously it's showing random data. It's okay. So let's go ahead, open it up and as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and extract this into its own blade component. So because I don't want this home blade get too big. So let's go ahead, open up our terminal and we can go ahead and create a new blade component. Now, because we already have a lot of components provided by Jetstream, I'm not going to be actually putting it here. I'm going to go ahead and put it inside components, uh, maybe blog, okay, or something like that. Components posts, I think would be a bit better because right now it's very big and it's a bit unorganized, so I'm not a big fan of it. So let's go ahead and do that. We can go ahead and say PHP artisan uh, make component. And I'm going to name it a uh, post card because it is basically a card, right? So that's what I'm going to name it. So I'm going to say under uh, posts and then uh, let's go posts slash post card. Okay, so let's hit enter. And I seem to have had a typo somewhere, component, yep, that's a typo, component. And also, you generally, uh, Blade components also have a PHP file, so we can go ahead and say dash dash view, and this should only make a view file for us. So let's go ahead, let's take a look. We now should have a post folder, and then inside of it, we have a postcard, right? So I'm going to open up this postcard and move all the kind of content related to a card inside of it. Although I don't want to pass in these... Uh, MD, whatever column related stuff. Okay. So one way we can fix that is actually we can kind of cut this out and wrap it with another div. Let's go ahead and do that. And the reason I'm doing this is maybe later on, we want to maybe show two cards per page, something like that. We want to change the layout. I don't want this to be actually controlled from the card itself. But now we can copy whatever is inside and move it over here, paste it in. 
So now we have our postcard. Let me close the terminal. And as you can see, it's a lot easier to work with it here than it was in this page. So now we can go ahead and include it. And it's very easy to do. We can do uh, x posts dot post card and then uh, that's it okay now we don't need to pass in a prop so in order to define a prop props are basically a way to quickly pass data to your uh, blade components we can go ahead and say props and i have two of them and here i'm going to go ahead and define a post prop okay and let's go ahead and pass it over we can say this uh, post equals post now this call in here makes it so the Quotation marks are interpreted as PHP code. So if you remove this, you would have to go ahead and do it like this, okay? Just something to keep in mind. So it's a kind of a shortcut of defining it. So now that we have this, hopefully uh, everything should work. And now we should be able to access this post variable from inside our postcard. So the first one, we have an A tag, which is going to be our image over here. Uh, and this should basically point to our show post page we don't have that page yet so i'm gonna for now leave it empty next up we have the post image so now since we are using faker there it's returning actually an image url so we can actually just go ahead and say uh, post image to view it now this will later on give us some issues for the posts we are actually uploading on our server we will go ahead and fix it later on for now this should be enough next up we have a link for categories so here we have like a lot of all tag over here for categories so I'm going to go ahead and also leave this be an empty tag. Uh, I think I will later on, once we actually uh, cre are creating categories, I'm going to go ahead and extract this into its own kind of badge component. But for now, this is okay. Uh, we have the date. Let's go ahead and display that as well. We can go ahead and here say post.published at. And now we have actually, we already are seeing some information. And then last but not least, we need to update the post title. So let's go ahead and do that. We can go ahead here and say uh, post title. Now this is an A tag, so I'm going to go ahead and give it an empty href for now. Later on, we will update it once we have created our kind of uh, show post page. So let's save this, guys. Let's go back. And as you guys can see, we are now able to actually see all of these. Now the tags are not correct. That's because we don't even have any tags on these. It's totally okay. We'll update that later on. For now, I think this is pretty good. So let's go ahead and also do the same thing for latest posts as well. So uh, we can go ahead on our controller and also pass in, I'm going to say latest posts. And instead of take three, I think on the latest post, we were showing nine. I could be wrong, but I think it was. So let's go ahead and display nine of them. We can also add pagination if you want, but I think this is enough since we are not using live wire. So uh, let's, this should be enough. Let's do a nine and then that's it. Let's go ahead and display it. So the logic will be actually identical to future posts. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this, move it over here and let's format this. And instead of this future posts in the loop, we are going to say uh, latest posts. And let's see if it's working. It is something is completely off. And I think it's because uh, we forgot the grid, right? I think I deleted the grid as well. So I need to also copy the grid. So let's go ahead and do that. The grid should be above the for each loop. And also we need a div for the closing. So let's format this again. Let's go back. And now we have latest post as well. Now the data is obviously not actually correct. So let's go ahead and implement that. So we, we will start off with future posts and then we will go ahead and write the logic for the latest post. So for future posts, obviously it needs to be published and also we need to get futured ones, right? So let's go ahead and start off, start off over here. So first we need to make sure the post is published and in order to do that we can go ahead and write a simple uh, verse statement and say uh, published at because it is a timestamp uh, a post that is published is always going to be the published ad is going to be in the past right so we can do a simple check and say if published ad is smaller or equal to now then we know that the post is published right now instead of now i'm going to go ahead and also use uh, carbon which is basically a package to manage or work with time. And the reason I use a carbon a lot is because it's actually easier to test. We can also fake this or set the time to any, any date you like if you're writing unit tests. So that's what I'm going to be using it. So that's how we can check if a post is published or not. Okay. Let's see if this changes our results. It did actually do something. So that's going to be the one. Now, uh, I don't personally like to write these long kind of queries on our controllers if 
we can avoid them. So let's go ahead and actually extract this into scope. So the way we're going to can do that is I'm going to go ahead, open up our post model and we can go ahead and define a scope. So we can say public uh, function scope published and scopes are a way to basically extract these eloquent queries into a very nice syntax. I'm going to copy this. And one thing we can do with the scope is it's going to pass, it's going to accept a query and then we can perform some operation on that query. So we can say query where, okay? So this scope allows us to basically do the same thing, but define this logic here and make it reusable everywhere else, right? So now here, instead of whatever we had before, we can say published and that's it, right? It's going to be the exact same as the code we had before. Now make sure you always add the scope prefix. It's important. That's how Laravel knows that this published is actually a scope, right? But when you're accessing it, you don't need to pass that uh, scope variable. So if you reload, we should say the exact same results. Uh, one more thing I would like to do as well, guys, is we also need to make sure the post is a future. So if we open up our migration for post, we added a Boolean future. That's how we know a post should be featured or it's like an important post or whatever. So we can do a simple uh, verse statement here. I'm going to also go ahead and create actually a scope for that as well. So I'm going to copy this and instead of scope published, I'm going to say uh, featured. And we are, we're going to do a very similar thing, uh, featured. If the featured is true, basically that's the check we are going to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out as well. I'm going to come open up our home controller and also say uh, featured. So get all the published, featured, and then take three of them. Now we also need to sort these. So I'm going to say uh, latest. Now by default, this latest will sort descendingly by created ad. So we can actually pass in uh, published ad. So it's sorted by published ad. So we get the latest by that order. And that should be basically all we have to do, guys. Let's do a reload and that's it. It seems to be working fine. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, we can go ahead and use the same code for our latest post. So let's go ahead and try this out. I'm going to open it up, copy this exact same code, except actually the take three. And so for latest post, it's basically the same as future post, except we are removing this future part, right? And that should get the job done. So let's go ahead, do a reload, and it seems to be working, right? And we're not getting the exact same posts, even though we are sorting by published by, right? So this concept tour, I'm not sure whatever it is, it's not featured, same as UT, but this Nemo one is, right? So we have gone ahead and implemented the homepage functionality, guys, for today's episode. Now, one more thing I would like to do before we end the episode is on our login and register page, we are still using the Jetstream logo. So let's go ahead and actually fix that before we end the video. So if you look at the login page, it's actually using a play component called authentication card logo. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and update this. So let's go ahead and find this. It should be inside our components. Authentication card logo it should be at the top. It's over here so this is it so this is basically an svg icon i'm going to go ahead and replace this actually with the icon we have like the logo we had at the top left so let's open up our header i'm going to search for it using uh, command p or control p if you're on windows and at the top the logo should be somewhere around here i believe this is the logo as you guys can see so i'm going to go ahead and copy it and put it inside this authentication logo now don't get rid of the a tag I'm just going to basically put it inside the A tag and that should get the job done. So let's go ahead, do a reload and now we get yellow code. Very nice. Now I like it to be a little bit bigger. So instead of uh, text Excel, I'm going to say to Excel. So it's a little bit bigger on the login page. Actually, let's go 3XL. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, looks nice. So now that we have it over here, I'm also going to go ahead and update it at the top of the page. So uh, let's see. Yeah, there's actually another logo it's called application logo, if you guys can see over here, right? So we have authentication card logo and application logo, and it seems to be basically the same. Maybe the application logo is the smaller version. I'm not sure. So I'm going to go ahead and update this application logo as well, because I want to use it on our application. So uh, on the header, I'm going to go ahead and copy the exact same thing. Put it inside application logo. And now I'm going to actually go ahead and replace what we have inside have our, inside our header with application logo. Now I'm going to pass in the A tag first because I do like that. So we can say X application logo. And I forgot the O. And let's go ahead, reload 
and it seems to be working now on the top bar i'm actually going to get rid of the code i'm just going to have yellow so let's go ahead and update the application logo and i'm going to get rid of the code so let's reload and it seems to be working now one more thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add basically redirect the user to our home page if they click on this so let's go ahead and add the route i'm going to say route home now we don't have this route yet so we should get an error so let's go ahead and define it inside uh, our web.php. So let me close all these files, open up uh, web.php, and I'm going to give this the name home. And now should work. Okay, so that's it, guys. Uh, we believe I believe I have updated all of these. Let's check out register page. It seems to be using the exact same logo, so we don't need to worry about anything else. So that's it, guys, for today's episode. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. On the next episode, we're going to be expanding on what we have done so far and actually start working on our blog page. That is it, guys. I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.